the Suicide Squad number two, Suicide Squad two, however you want to call it, whether it's a prequel to the original or a reboot that acknowledges the first movie, however you want to call it, I had a blast. Honestly, from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie, the pacing was perfect. It, it, I think by design in the beginning of the movie, it had a lull in the buildup. But once they got to the beachfront and spoilers, if you haven't seen the movie, consider this your jumping off point. Go watch the movie. You'll definitely enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, come back and leave me a comment as to why you didn't enjoy it. What, di what didn't work for you and what did work for you? You know, put those thoughts down in the comments. So I, with that out of the way, I think this was a perfect movie. If there was a, if there's a, a, a blueprint for a summer movie, this is it. Pretty much you could just turn your mind off and focus on what's in front of you and you will be entertained. I was, and that's exactly what I did. I took it as a brand new art piece. And I enjoyed every second of the R rating that this movie gloriously portrayed. Now, in my trailer review, if you go back and see the first trailer that it dropped, I thought the F-bombing was gratuitous and overused. And though they do a lot, of, they do do a lot of profanity, but they don't do a lot of what they showed in the trailer, which most don't. Um, so I was kind of happy to finally see that. And I'm so glad that my expectations were completely wrong or my judgment was completely wrong about what direction they were going to take in this movie. But I'm also glad that the other half, my, my second review of the second review tra uh, trailer that when it came out uh, was more in line as to say, yep, this is the kind of movie that I want to see. And that was definitely the vibe that this movie took. And wow, just so many, like I said, the pacing was great. The story was pretty simplistic. You know, the, the main villain, you know, there was a couple of, of little villains, but then obviously the, the, the big mega villain, Starro, was awesome to see jump from the comic book pages to the big screen. Was kind of gross though. It, it, did anybody, you know, when they were showing the film and he was like, you know, He's, uh, what did they say? He's birthing. And I'm like, wait, is that like the, 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 you know, the, 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 the we we'll just call it the V that they were showing there. Cause it looked like it. And it was just popping out little starfish, little Patrick's. And, and it was kind of gross when it, when it was like big gigantic and it was, you know, shooting off all those starfishes and they kind of looked like, um, like birds. So it was kind of. So that was kind of gross. And when the starfishes got stuck in their faces, it reminded me of the character. I don't know which one is which, but if you've seen SpongeBob, you'll know what I'm talking about. It was that mermaid, mermaid man or barnacle boy. I don't think it's barnacle boy. I think it's mermaid man that had the starfish logo on his face. Literally, someone brought it up to me and that's all I saw after that point. Did anyone else feel that way about it? Or was it just my, you know, childish mind that just jumped? But maybe it was the the power of persuasion, I guess. Someone just mentioned it and my mind just went to that. And I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. And it just kind of stuck. Uh, but yeah, it was such a blast to see this movie. I am so glad that they decided to go in the route that they did. On a little side note, there was so much Marvel in this DC uh movie and maybe not so much so much marvel in this dc movie of course we know that the director james gunn that produced the gardens of the galaxy was producing this uh film and he did an amazing job and should be commended uh the early reviews from this thursday friday and saturday have been nothing but amazing and i'm happy to see a dc movie trending and the way it's going the hype that's behind it, I am all for that. And we had Yondu, obviously, in the beginning. And when his, you know, head got blown off when he was swimming because he was all freaked out, I thought that was so dope. Then you had Mantis, you know, when they were in the bar and, and there were the, the, the three lead singers. I don't know if anybody else noticed it, but Mantis was, was right there. And I was like, dope. And then Korg... 
obviously was the uh, what was her name the the rat girl rat catcher 2 i think they were calling her so i i love that that you had um marvel characters that just cameoed and giving support right to james gunn and maybe they weren't you know contractually couldn't be more in the movie but just the right amount of the, the their presence was enough to to make it enjoyable and actually if you count you could count four if you count Weasel, which was played by Sean Gunn, uh, which if a lot of you guys don't remember, he also comes out in the Gardens of the Galaxy as Yondu's number two, if you will. So it was nice to see that and it just goes to show you that people, and I've said this in other reviews, where you have uh, multiple Marvel actors or Marvel stars that come out in Marvel movies that they stick together. So maybe just the familiarity, the way, the fact that they've already worked with each other, they kind of just stick in bunches. Uh, so I thought it was a a good commentary on, on the loyalty they have for James Gunn and maybe, you know, you know, Taika also two great directors and Taika is also an actor he obviously plays the voice of Korg in in uh in Thor Ragnarok uh so it, it was just fun to see but this movie is just fun it's it's out there it's gory it's blood like I said it's just everything you want to see and it's it's just the 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 cgi was on point the music was on point so for me this movie for me was an a minus it didn't hit it all out of the park but it definitely hit a lot of the raw of the right notes i thought even though i like the goriness the part that i didn't like about this movie is the killing spree the fact that it went out of its way to hit us with that shock value of character after character after character dying and then when rick flags died i think we all felt that a little bit harder and can we i'm gonna just say this did it was it me or was the acting from some of the actors that were in the first movie especially rick flags it's it, it seemed more inspired it seemed like they just cared a little bit more i remember when i watched the first suicide squad even will smith was probably the only one those acting was more it flowed but everyone felt everyone else felt like if they were just they didn't want to be there and just kind of went through the motion and even harley quinn in this one it looked like she was having a blast playing harley quinn it might not be true maybe it's not true and you guys know there was like oh ruffles in production but i don't think i, I heard that i think everybody was just speaking so highly of james gunn and how they loved working with him uh, and I thought I wasn't gonna like Peacemaker, but I did. I think he was one of the more the the, the funnier characters in this movie. I I enjoyed the twist in the latter end of the movie when he turns to the dark side. But he does it with good with not. I don't know if you call it good reason or bad reason, but it was a legit reason. Hey, you know, if this gets out, it might cause an international incident. And a lot of people are are combining this and saying, oh, it's a, it's a, you know, a, a condemnment of the way America and people are looking too much into it. Like, oh my God, just stop. And not everything has to be all political size. It's, it's just be stereotypes and we could laugh at stereotypes. Stop taking yourself too freaking serious and just enjoy the darn freaking movie. So yeah, definitely for me, an A minus movie. It didn't hit it out of the park, but solid, solid up there. You'll enjoy it. Uh, again, the it, it was just a, a movie, like I said in the beginning, a movie for you to sit there, watch, pop, pop some popcorn. If you're seeing this in the movie theater, if, if you watched it in HBO, you know, obviously pop your popcorn or yourself some good food. And if you're in the movie theater, just sit there and just enjoy. If you could watch it in 3D, I think this movie lends itself very, very well for the 3D experience. So, you know, pony up the extra money and just sit there and enjoy a movie done right for its sole purpose to just entertain you. And after you watch it saying, yeah, that was a kick-ass movie because this was a kick-ass movie. So anyways, those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.